Okay, what's going on, guys, and welcome to a brand new episode of Energized. Ross, introduce the guests, man. Today we've got a Cage Warriors Belfast and Team Rhino special. We have the absolute knockout artist that is Mr. James Sheen, and we've flown Adam Derby home from Dubai <laughs> for this episode. Lads, how you doing? Exclusive. Catch you here. It is the Catch exclusive. Man, Derby right? is showing me up. I look pasty. I look mad pasty. D- don't worry, James. No one looks good standing next to that. Is there any chance of throwing a filter on me? <laughs> no bother, no bother. Maybe we'll just throw one on him. It might be easier. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, lads, h- how are we feeling in the build-up to uh, Cage Warriors Belfast Derby? You're going to make the pro debut. Are you buzzing or what? Ah, oh, it's long overdue, man. Long overdue. Been trying to make it. This, this is the this is the official tour time. Trying to make it. I've signed in a contract. We we'll pull out the stuff. People pulling out. So, looking forward to it. Can't wait. Feel great. Buzzing for it. And then James, this this is your first uh, fight on home soil in a very very long time. Um, how are you feeling about that? Does that make you more excited? You get more friends and family up to the event? Yeah, yeah, man. I actually cannot wait. Like, I, it's it seems like you get used to doing like the flights away and like the stuff like that. But like, it 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 kind of reminds me of like the amateur days that like I was so used to like driving up to Belfast and like putting on a show and then driving back. So like. I'm looking forward to that buzz again, like having friends and family at it and kind of like the drive up rather than the flight and stuff. Like, need, need like a bit of nostalgia. Like, uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it, lads. And then, James, obviously on top of that, this is probably the first time in a very long time that you've had multiple pro fighters fighting out Team Rhino on the one card. Uh, how proud are you of uh, Adam Darby and Paddy Wilkins and making the jump to pro? And how do you think uh, they're going to do? I think, like, it was only a matter of time. Like, the two lads are killers. Like, they're absolutely killers. Like, Derby literally came back yesterday off the flight and, like, like peace, peace me up. So, like, I like, cannot <laughs> wait from him. Don't him. He hadn't even broken up yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Derby, Dar- Derby, this is the whole thing. You, I build you up. You and build I me you up. up. That's how it goes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah so, yeah, yesterday, build your Derby up. knocked me out in farm, <laughs> yeah. But then I got up and knocked him out. So, like, good. We're about ready. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> now, like the the two boys are killers. Like Dar- Derby in particular, like he, it's been long overdue his pro debut, and like I feel like he's just gonna go out here and have so many eyes on him after this event. Like, and then Paddy Wilkinson is just an absolute powerhouse. Like the man hits like a truck. So looking forward to it. Just three three good wins on a on a good card. Like that's like what more can you ask for? Yeah, yeah. Paddy Wilkinson will make it his, his pro debut as well at Cage Warriors 140 Belfast. And we've had him on with Troy Gibson in, doing a face-off in the build-up to that. So we'll put that at the end of this show to make sure to check it out. But Adam, you'll be making your pro debut after three years out. Like, why is now the perfect time for you to make your pro debut? Well, the perfect time was a year ago or a year and a half ago. But we had COVID. Then I had, I think I took two fights. I had one pull-out, another pull-out. Then I, I ended up getting braces done, and that was like a year and a half. So I was kind of holding off and making the switch over to pro with my braces on. Yeah. And now I've been trying to get a fight six or seven months, and I just had pull out after pull out. People protecting their records, and I understand, like you know, I haven't fought in three years. I'm zero and zero as a pro, ten and three as an amateur. For these guys to fight me, it's like they're three and oh, four and oh, four and one. Why, why risk it? You know, if they win it'll be said I should have won anyways if they lose it's like you just lost was a guy that's zero on zero so I understand but it just really annoys me when people take fights and then they pull out a couple of weeks later just don't take it if you're not going to do it you know and then uh, Darby obviously we touched on it at the top of the hour you went over to Boy what was it like training with the likes of uh, John Mitchell and Munir Laziz you know what I mean uh, a few oh, it's UFC it's guys there yeah it's, it's just it's next It's ne- no I wouldn't say next level I would yeah I'd say next level it's, it's different for me you know because you get used to your training partners back home you know who does what, you know, we know what you're expecting, Like, but then when you go to a new gym, especially abroad, it's like, ah, and everyone wants to kill you, so you're going in there ready for <laughs> war, like, but I have to say, all the guys, very accepting, really made me feel part of the team and stuff, but I'm back home now, and I'm ready to fucking kill. And show off the tan. Oh, I'm show off the tan, yeah, I need to keep it topped up, though, I might do a sunbed, maybe, I only mess with my mother, kill me. <laughs> 
and then uh, obviously Derby as well. Cage Warriors is new to you. You fought on uh, the show as an amateur before. Do you think there'll be any transition between that and pro? No, obviously it's smaller gloves, like, and you can't take any big shots, like. But look at the length of me; I'm not going to get hit, anyways. Uh, <laughs> I actually made me professional. I actually made me amateur debut on Cage Warriors. My, my first ever amateur fight was in Cage Warriors, Cork. eighty-one uh, in the Tree Arena. So okay. it's only fitting that I make it a professional, you know, in the SSA Arena. I'd say there'd be about at least three or four thousand people there, like it's the UFC of Ireland, like isn't it? Yeah, it, well, it definitely is for us. We were like, I, I, I can't remember a show that I, I've been looking forward to so much in such a long time uh, as Cage Warriors Belfast. I, I know there is other shows that come to Ireland, but there's feel something special about this one. I feel like it's the up and coming young talent in the country being put on a, a massive platform, and that's what makes us look forward to it so much. You know, definitely, it, it feels like the next wave is coming in now. You know, the, the Connors, the series, the Paul Redmond stuff like that. It feels like the next wave now. It's the next platform for us all to come in. Absolutely, yeah. and I think in about three or four years' time, the UFC will be flooded with uh, more it's Irish blood. What's going on? Oh, sorry, sorry about that, Derby. Uh, I think I think we're okay on our end. No, uh, yeah. Jimbo, t- tell us this: um, what do you think a win here will mean for you in the welterweight division? I know you don't look to, like to look too far past your opponents, but this division's really opening up, and you're definitely in the mix here with a win. Yeah, absolutely. Like. This would be what I have three three fight win streak, so a four yeah. four fight win streak, and like against serious competition as well. Like that that puts me right up there in the mix. Like, the, the, like you said, Ross, the the division is so open. Like, there's no real clear cut. Like this guy is next in the line for a title. So like, I honestly feel like beat um beat this next guy and then like get a quick turnaround again. And uh, that would put me right in the spot for a title for like possibly early next year. Like that's like I don't like to think too much into it. I just like to focus on the the next fight. But realistically, that is in in, uh, in the back of my mind. Like a, a, a title definitely is is there like next year. Uh, I well believe as well. I think uh, you definitely have the name power and you definitely have the resume to get one. You've been in there with uh, two former. Um, title holders and, and cage warriors already so w- yeah. why wouldn't you be up in those talks and um, who do you think will actually fight next for the for the belt that welterweight um so i think reese is gonna beat burlington and mm. i think um once he does i think he'll either go to the oc or he'll go elsewhere possibly um depends how close the fight was uh burlington will probably have like uh, a fight then with possibly maybe Figlak or someone along the lines. Like I, I know I'm probably leaving out someone. I think Matt um, Bonner's dropping down. Well, yeah, Matt Bonner's dropping down. So that could um, be Matt, Matt, Matt Bonner there as well. So like, uh, is he dropping to welterweight? Because I know he's fought two catchweights. Yeah, uh, I don't think that was his choice. I think that that's all he got offered uh, uh, opponent wise. So. He's, yeah, okay. he well, making the, the drop. You'd you'd imagine he's in the mix as well. Then that like he's he's a former middleweight champion, um, and like he's serious high level as well. So like you'd imagine, even like Figlak and Bonner to fight in the meantime, and then the winner of that to fight Burlington, possibly, and then I come in next year and whoever whoever's left, I fight them. Yeah. Well, just, we had Graham Boyle on the, just at the beginning of the year, wasn't it? And he said he's going to come to Ireland a few times. Now, Belfast is only, this one's only the first one booked into Ireland, but like, yeah. should we be expecting another Cage Warriors or Irish card again this year? Yeah, I, de- I definitely think we will. Um, obviously, haven't spoken to Graham since that show. Uh, we'll probably speak to him up in Belfast, but I'm going to tip October, November. I'd say there'll be a showdown in Cork, I'd imagine. Um. Sometimes you have to think about it logistically and in terms of like prices of venue and stuff like that. I know that they, uh, what's called Graham, obviously being a Cork man, probably has those those connections down there. So uh, I'd say Cage Warriors Cork will be uh, a no brainer. But um, and I'm sure the lads would love to get on a Cork show. If not, bring it back to Dublin because uh, yeah. there's enough fighters in Dublin to get the job done. I think venues is just the problem when it comes to Dublin. But who's to say Cage Warriors couldn't do the three arena? Uh, I'd definitely go. I'd be there. I know the two boys would uh, bring a Gansey load of people as well. Is there a dream venue where you guys would actually like to fight on the Cage Warriors banner, lads? Start yourself, Derby. Oh, the, tr- the three arena for me, it hits home, doesn't it? Like, it's, it's mm. local. 
you bring all your friends, your family, everyone's there. The tree arena would be my dream venue. I've already done it, like, but for Cage Warriors, yeah, the tree arena. And what was that, James? Um, I think it's a bit of a weird one. Like, I, I already fought in the tree arena, and that was great. But for some reason, I, I really wanted to fight in the Helix. Right, because that was the first ever Cage Warriors show that I went to. It was the it was the one that McGregor won the the Champ Champ the belt on the New Year's Eve card and like that I, at that time I wasn't in Team Rhino and I remember watching I think Reds was on the card as well and like a few legends of Irish MMA and I, I don't know why, like it's it's right down the road for me and I don't know, it just sticks as as like I I'd love to do that venue. Yeah, true. Also, uh, just remember that uh, Whitehall are actually undefeated ever since their appearance on the uh, Energy Show. So uh, they went three and zero last time out. So uh, they have to keep yeah, that going. The yeah, we have both Chellies uh, on on the lead of this one as well. So uh, their opponents better be wary. Oh yeah, man, gonna... Whitehall doesn't mess around. Let's get yeah. into the opponents, lads. We'll start off yourself, Derby. Like, what do you know about your opponent, and what are you expecting to face? Come. The 25th of June at Cage Warriors 140 Belfast, live in the SSE Arena Belfast and on UFC Fight Pass. Uh, the, the years were like, you know, I'm quite long, so I'd imagine he's going to come in, try to take me down, he's going to lunge. I think he favours himself as a striker, but I just don't think he's anywhere near me level. He's never faced anyone like me, I don't think. That sounds like a dickhead, like, but I'm quite long like and skinny. But I think when he gets in there and he's, he can't reach me, he'll start throwing overhands and swinging. He'll shoot for the takedown, and I can see myself TK on him in the fourth or second round. Okay, and James, what about yourself? Because like after your win, impressive win last time, I think myself and Ross thought you, you deserved the crypto bonus, and you didn't get it. Crypto but, like, bonus. Uh, like, are you going to go out and make sure you get this crypto bonus next time? Nah, it's, I think it's I think it's rigged. I honestly think it's, <laughs> I think it's rigged because I deserve that bonus, right? And we're in the hotel after, and me and Reds are. Stuck it up to the lads and just said, "What what's going on here? Like, what what brown envelopes are being passed around? Like, I I, I won that, I won that crypto, but uh, I'm fairly sure it tanked the next day. Like, so uh, I'm kind of oh, delighted. Yeah. How much how much is the crypto bonus? I think it was <laughs> two and a half grand. Oh, yeah. was it? Yeah, yeah. So that would have been nice now, but like. Yeah, but you know what? You know what? You know what was actually worse about that. And I know your knockout was brilliant, but do you remember Manny Ackman? I think it was the next night did like a spin and yeah. wheel hit knockout. Yeah, yeah, and he, he and he didn't get it. He didn't get it either. It was like, oh no, no, nothing too spectacular, James. So like maybe like a nice little like ground and pound finish or something like that might get you this time out. I don't, know, I don't know, lads. I, I need to do like a rolling thunder or some shit, or like. <laughs> no, no, that, that's where you're missing out. Like you're, you're, you're doing too spectacular. You know what I mean? They're going like, too classy, yeah. Yeah, yeah, too. A little yeah, less flashy. Like, a little less flashy. Yeah, yeah. Maybe like decision, a nice decision win. Yeah, or like if you can get him to like quit on the stool or something like that, maybe you'll win it then. Yeah, a good split decision might, might, might get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. That's it. Everyone loves a split decision. <laughs> James, you're on top form today, but I tell you that. And uh, but like, how are you getting the job done? Split decision, is it? Because like, we need to put our crypto on this, Ross. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, T- tough split decision. Realistically, he's probably gonna come out on top, but uh, I, I just nabbed the split decision. That's what I'm aiming for. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love it. In fairness, you let the hands go la- uh, last time. Hopefully, we get to see you let the hands go again this time because uh, that was something else. That uppercut was sweet. Yeah, yeah. Like obviously, I was I was working a lot with uh with Neil Siri, um, just just to have a bit more confidence in my hands and like kind of like uh, just have my feet planted as I'm throwing and stuff. So uh, like basic basic fundamentals that just I needed to uh bring into the cage and like uh, it paid off. So uh now um fairly much the same thing. Like looking at the opponent now, um. He's a jiu-jitsu purple belt, and um, he throws not not sloppy hands, but like his box wouldn't be the best. He kind of just comes forward, so like I I, I see openings there as well. Um, so honestly, I feel I could take it to the ground, or I could finish on the feet as well. So honestly, just going in there and seeing um seeing where where I feel most comfortable. 
Oh, we'd love to hear it. And uh, what about yourself, Darby? You got you have eight finishes out of those ten uh, amateur wins. Now you got the smaller gloves on. Are we expecting to see finish mania come? come Absolutely, uh, yeah. There'll be, there'll be some. There'll be some sort of finish. Maybe TKO or submission. I've quite a good level of jiu jitsu, so we'll see what happens. I don't like to predict fights because you never know how it's going to go. But definitely a finish of some kind. That's yeah. what we like to hear on the end of the show. We we want to hear finishes. You know what I mean? Um, I know <laughs> Put your money on it. Split decisions, yes. but uh, it's crypto on it. Can, you can leave your split decisions at home here. <laughs> I, I think Derby's going to finish him with a left knee to the face. A left knee to the face. We'll see. We'll try to do it for you, James. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> In fairness, <laughs> those, those yokes are like bleeding knives. They are those knees. That's just, for, that's just before we wrap things up, Like, uh, how many people are coming from Team Rhino up to watch the event in Belfast? Uh, the Team Rhino crowd, they always support us. Any of the fighters, amateur or pro, you always get the whole team going, especially a show like this. I'd expect to see the whole gym there, not just the HQ. All the gyms will be there, I'd imagine. A good good number. Yeah, Jamie Abbott will be selling tickets on, on DL to the Donami group. We'll, we'll bring we'll bring the Dean. We'll bring the Dean. She'll bring a crowd where you know she is quite famous now, so oh, well, she's a, yeah. Yeah, shout out to Nadine Abbas at Going Pro, uh, signed the big contract. So, uh, fair play to her. She deserves it. I was only saying to one of the lads there the other way, um, she, she's uh, unfortunate they don't have a birth weight category because she'd make that as well. No bother to her. <laughs> Listen, look, look what she done a few weeks ago. She went and fought a girl that was like 10 pounds heavier than her, 12 pounds heavier than her, and she beat her up, you know. She's, re- she's ready yeah. for pro. Great, don't great forget she got a title. Point. That's very important here. Yeah. The Derby, that she got the title because uh, she did get the title. That, 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 was, that was made on this show. That was made in this show. Yeah, actually was. Yeah, the, the energy was belt. <laughs> the energy was belt. Yeah, but but lads, obviously the two is going to be competing in the Cage Wars 140 Belfast, June 25th, live on UFC Fight Pass. If you want to get tickets, make sure to go on Adam's Instagram. If you want to get tickets, go on to James' Instagram. And like, it's going to be one night not to be missed. Ross, take it away, bud. Guys, if you have been watching this on YouTube, make sure to like, share, subscribe, hit the bell notification. So you do not miss any energized content. If you're watching it on Fight Pass, make sure to hit a favor, give the lads a follow, and their social medias have like been ticking across the bottom there. So give them all your support. Uh, if you're looking for tickets, maybe hit the lads up. They might have some. If not, um, make sure to watch it on UFC Fight Pass on the night. And as always, stay, stay energized. energized. And a Jai Shaw, up the Irish. Been sussing you guys a couple of times. I've seen a couple of clips. I think you've done some interviews with Dylan Moran and that I, I, I saw. So keep going. Keep up the good work, guys.